I'm discussing all the all the conversation that we were having. But so you know, we uh, had in between five and six participants because we struggle with uh, someone's microphones. But um, we, um, the majority of the people who uh, were in the conversation live in Santa Rosa and um, a lot of them um, operate uh, short-term rentals. And we did have a neighbor too who uh, lives in front of one of our uh, of our short-term rentals. So you know how the group was divided. Um, we talked about what was working well with the regulation. And in that part, there were uh, three things that were mentioned in this in this, um, in this this topic. The first one was that um, the uh, 198 cap limit actually works well. Uh, and um, some, some people were saying that maybe it should be reduced over time. Um, it was mentioned too that the uh, 1,000 uh, feet required minimum distance for uh, non-hosted short-term rentals in single-family dwellings was something that they uh, appreciated. And one last comment that was uh, provided was that um, the application process was really clear and smooth, even though it was a new process. And they uh, have said that uh, planners have been very responsive and very informative when, when they ask questions about the process on its own. So this was uh, on the side of the positive uh, part of the conversation. In terms of what was not working well, this was a longer um, conversation, and um, the first comment was related about the um, the short term rental permit price. Um, a lot of the people in the group agreed that um, the um, the price was very expensive, and uh, the conversation started to go a little further, uh, comparing it to other jurisdictions in the county. And um, the conversation showed, and the data that was provided by by the people in our call. Uh, that we're the third most expensive jurisdiction in Sonoma County and uh, that this was something that they thought we should be changing because it, two other jurisdictions, which are uh, Cloverdale and Hillsborough, are actually way smaller cities than, than the city of Santa Rosa. Um, in terms of um, uh, what was not working well too, one of the uh, comments that uh, was made and supported by other um, uh, people in our group was that uh, the monitoring element is still not working well. And um, one of the comments was related to the noise monitoring. Um, they uh, believe that we need a better plan for, for addressing this. And uh, they mentioned that the monitoring uh, noise can be done by apps instead of, of trying to, uh, to make neighbors uh, be the ones who have to complain about it or um, uh, to address the situation. And one of the things that, uh, was uh, was also included in this part of the conversation is that uh, the city is limiting uh, businesses instead of of uh, providing options to make this uh, a better uh, situation for property owners as well as people who rent the their their properties. So um, in relationship to um, the number of of units that are um, that can be uh, or that should be uh, permitted in in terms of of the cap limit. Um, one of our uh, participants mentioned that uh, there was um, a very uh, difficult situation with having short-term rentals because there's already homeowner associations that don't let um, neighbors um, rent their properties. And this limits the spaces uh, where the city can actually have uh, more short-term rentals. And um, the um, there was also a, an opposed opinion in relationship to this that uh, we don't need more short-term rentals because we already have 3,000 in, in, in the county and um, specifically um, 1,864 permitted units and around uh, 400 that are unpermitted. So this was just uh, part of the conversation. We had opposed visions, very respectful conversation though. I wanna make that very clear. This was a great uh, group in that sense. We we had different opinions, but people were really, uh, really respectful and, and really, um, I, I, I want to say really nice to each other. Uh, it was it, it was really like that. And so in terms of um, other things that um, were recommended as solutions for for trying to fi find like a middle point in between this this conversations that I just mentioned, um, people people uh, provided some proposals. Uh, one of our uh, residents said that we should have a separation in between non-hosted and hosted short term rentals because um, short-term uh, non-hosted ones should be treated as businesses while uh, hosted ones should be uh, treated in a different way where um, only uh, licenses can be removed if 
there's something wrong uh, happening in that property. But if nothing wrong happens, they, they think we should treat them um, in a different way than we treat non-hosted rentals uh, that are the ones that should be paying uh, the TOT taxes and being basically uh, treated as businesses. And um, we um, also got to um, how we can make the, how, how we can improve the process of applications. Uh, some things were mentioned as uh, uh, our process being uh, user friendly, but one of our our uh, participants mentioned that this was a very difficult process for for elder people, particularly people who have been um, not uh, familiar with blueprints. This was one of the conversations that was uh, brought up, as well as uh, providing the opportunity of signing through. Um, uh, electronic methods uh, instead of having to be there in person to sign uh, documents, and as well as uh, taking the taxes directly from Airbnb or other applications instead of having to uh, pay them to the to the city separately. And um, I think at the end we had a very nice conversation of like how can we uh, support the city to have um, hosted uh, short term rentals as a uh, as a as a as an option that supports the the community and uh, supports the income of of people who own rooms that um, that can be rented, and and a really good way of visiting the city, um, as well as uh, not making uh, neighbors struggle because uh, the people who visit short term rentals that are hosted actually um, can have a nice relationship with the with the people who are operating the short term rentals. However, we also uh, agreed that there's a diversity in the um, people who visit Santa Rosa as well as the people who host uh, short term rentals in the city. So uh, just recognizing that diversity was uh, the last closing comment that we got. And that was it. I'm sorry if I took a long time, but th this was a very fruitful and very nice conversation. Thank you for all the people who participated in our group. Okay, thank you. Next up, we have group two that was led by Lou. Well, hello. Uh, yeah, I really the ability of, of the residents in this town and uh, how they can get together and, and speak civilly and, and uh, just, uh, just contribute uh, for the sake of contributing. Uh, I had seven participants. Three of them had short-term rentals uh, or were waiting to get one approved. Three did not have short-term rentals, but lived near one. And then I had a mystery guest that didn't talk at all, but uh, I appreciated their presence nonetheless. Uh, we went down through the questions and uh, with, with respect to the question, what about the ordinances working? Um, I got the comments that it brings organization to the system. Um, several people commented that having the definitions was a positive that, that helped uh, you know, set expectations and understanding. Um, one person said it provided parameters, so that, that ties into that. Um, several people liked the idea of the ordinance, what they saw, they liked the idea of rules. Um, and um, there was a, there was a, this comment probably belongs in question too, but uh, the idea of creating two different classes, hosted and non-hosted would work better as a solution than, than having short-term rentals uh, and having them incorporated the way they are now. I, I know they're not exactly the same, but uh, but that was the comment. And that uh, I got a comment that one of the code enforcement officers is doing a great job. So that was very affirming also. Um, moving on to question two about what is not working. Um, there was a comment that we don't know if hosted should be thrown in the same boat as non-hosted. So again, that, that distinction that even though the ordinance calls them out in slightly different ways, maybe there needs to be more distance between those two uh, types of uses. Um, received a comment that the thousand foot distance is problematic from a noise perspective. Um, and um, that maybe it doesn't really solve solve for that problem. And there was a suggestion that noise monitors would be a better way to handle that than trying to use a thousand foot radius. Um, the ordinance needs to focus more on the problem issues. Um, at the same time, it shouldn't penalize everyone for a few bad apples. So uh, this was something we spent a lot of time on. We talked about the fact that um, there are good actors and bad actors. We don't all agree to those terms, but um, generally there was, I think, most of a consensus that um, the, the bad apples shouldn't ruin it for the, for the good actors. Um, there was a comment, uh, you know, an assertion that unhosted 
uh, rentals really damage just the, the structure of residential neighborhoods. Um, the underlying um, peace that, that people have come to expect in those neighborhoods, the unknowns of strangers in the neighborhood, uh, drunkenness, profanity, those sorts of things. Um, there was, a, there was a, one, of a, one of the people in my room that actually code, called code compliance uh, this past weekend, and we got there 10 minutes too late. And, and while I was sad that we got there 10 minutes too late, I was glad that we got there. And that shows that we're trying to move in the right direction. Um, there's, I think, a, a sense that hosted rentals um, are not the problem here. I think there was a lot of agreement on that. Um, and that we should strengthen the local contact requirements. Um, I'm hearing that a lot of times when local contacts are called, there's not really an adequate response, which is a requirement of the ordinance, but perhaps that should still be strengthened. Um, there was a comment that exterior lighting should be a part of the ordinance. Um, and even though there are illumination regulations elsewhere in our municipal code, uh, that with respect to STRs, there should be some specific regulations that talk about the time limits for those lights. And I thought that was an interesting uh, suggestion. Uh, similarly, uh, there was a suggestion that guest arrival times should be regulated so that they're not arriving at two in the morning, which I also thought was interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't really considered that that would be a problem. Um, and again, one of the major things with the ordinance not working is that these problems are cyclical due to constant turnover. And because of the constant turnover, no matter how well an ordinance is written, the feeling is that you're still going to get um, bad actors in the form of bad tenants on occasion. And for that reason, um, perhaps they should not be in residential neighborhoods. Um, the comment was made that full-time residents should have greater rights than the revolving door bunch. That's a quote. Um, and then someone said that I was doing a great job. And so I'll take it. Uh, for the third question, there was uh, recommended solutions. And um, we had just a few things there. We actually ran out of time, but uh, there was a suggestion that there be different limits on larger residences. We're talking about very large residences because they are conducive to those large gatherings that we're trying to avoid. Um, there was discussion about uh, taking the limit from uh, 10 people down to four to six people with two to three daytime guests. Um, the fact that the ordinance requires residents to babysit, again, a quote, uh, short-term rentals is a problem. Um, and while the residents in my group didn't mind calling code enforcement or the police department to report uh, a nuisance, they don't like having to contact the local contacts first. They think that puts them in the middle of the situation and that the ordinance should not require that. Um, that calling code enforcement should be the first stop in the resident's response process. And that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now we will hear from Nancy from group three. Great, thank you. Reporting out from group three, we had a majority that live in San Francisco, Santa Rosa and that we had two that manage and consider themselves very you know, long-term managers of very effective short-term rentals. And then we had a couple of residents that have had bad experiences with them in their neighborhood. So we had a, a lot of dialogue back and forth. And, and then we had one person that wasn't able to, it was apparently driving, so didn't have input. What was working well up with the ordinance was having a hotline. They felt that that was really um, a helpful addition. What was not working, one person mentioned that she felt that they were, were up to 50% of short-term rentals in their neighborhood. Another person mentioned that entry is not fair given the 1,000 foot proximity that's in place now. One person spoke more globally about just not agreeing with the model of allowing short-term rentals in neighborhoods and allowing business entities to kind of take over the neighborhood. Um, there's a feeling that, you know, a lot of our zoning is for single family residences and it shouldn't turn into a business model that we should be looking at commercial areas, particularly for non-hosted short-term rentals. There was, there were a lot of recommended solutions, primarily the kind of common ground that this meeting is starting to have 
where people are are you know have a common enemy in the bad actor and that like with Lou's group this was brought up a lot and a comment that was made by one person but reinforced by others is that the city needs to develop quarterly reports showing where the issues are occurring what types of issues noise parking etc so that people are more aware of it and and have a better understanding and that there's technology available to address a number of the issues and the city needs to give most of its focus to going after bad actors. So there are other comments, but that's a basic summary. Very good discussion among the group. Thank you to the participants. Thank you very much. And now we will hear from group four led by Sherry. Hi, and I will say that as much as I'd like to go into a lot of detail, we have 11 groups in total, and I want to make sure we're out of here on time. So I will I will be brief, but please don't think that that means that my group didn't have a lot to say because we had a very, very good discussion. Um, we had seven people, two of which are um, neighbors of short-term rentals, two of which, well, three if you count husband and wife, um, two of which are um, short-term rental operators within the city and two folks that one operates one out of the area and another um, person both of these would like to potentially operate short-term rentals, but for one reason or another, and in one case, it was, again, the um, 1,000 foot distance are not able to, to operate. Um, we, we talked a lot about um, the neighbors went, we went around in, in a circle. And as it turns out, the two people that went first happened to, well, the three people, husband and wife, um, happened to be neighbors to short-term rentals. So they were able to express how um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad actor. It's just the constant um, turnover of guests that disrupts the neighborhood and affects schools and affects libraries. Um, and, you know, their their day to day life is much different because of having um, this transient population come in. They didn't buy their home. Um, both of them li have lived in the city for a while and they feel very disappointed that their quiet oasis is now um, is not quiet anymore. Um, and again, like they're they were saying that, you know, there's not kids moving in to play with my kids or go to school with my kids and that type of thing. So um, one of the participants that is a neighbor um, came with a came armed with a very good list of what other jurisdictions are doing. Um, and both would like to see uh, prohibition of non-hosted in short in residential neighborhoods. Period. Um, we had two guests or two hosts. One of which is a non-hosted short-term rental who happens to be operating right next door to one of the um, neighbors that was in my group. So of, of all the odds, but they had a very they have a very good relationship. They've worked together. Um, this operator sounds like I mean the exact type of operator you would like to have. He's, you know, made, um, he's, he has noise surveillance equipment up. He's made, you know, changes to his layouts and, and that type of thing to try to respond to, um, to what this neighbor has, has brought forward. So he's, you know, he's kind of the example of the perfect, the perfect host. And then we had a, a young woman who is a host of a hosted short term rental and like, many you know folks before me have said she feels like the the cost and the process is a little bit onerous and makes it um, not very fruitful uh, for her to to continue being a hosted rental um, and then the two people that would like to be able to um, host but can't one again was based on uh his belief that because he owns two properties on one parcel that he couldn't, I don't, he's going to follow up with me. He had an interesting situation. And then one young woman, unfortunately, purchased her house and then the ordinance went into effect and her neighbor decided to become a non-hosted, which basically kicked her out of, of um, consideration. So there was a lot more than that. And it was, again, a very wonderful, warm, civil group. And I, I'm very appreciative. 
Thank you very much. Now we will hear from group five, who was led by Suzanne. Yeah, so I just will kind of reiterate also um, some of the concerns that have been brought up, um, but also um, I think we had a, a good discussion overall. Um, I think our group concluded that there was a main concerns um, over um, essentially penalties for um, short-term rental uh, rent renters, essentially. Um, may, and there was maybe a suggestion of how there could be more of um, enforcement for um, the, for guests um, regarding, you know, any like noise complaints or um, things like that. Um, another suggestion um, was also um, having uh, short-term rentals only um, essentially there being a cap on how many um, days uh, they can be rented out, such as like six to eight weeks um, a year um, to just kind of buffer between um, essentially residents that are renting out their homes versus non-residents. Um, a majority of our concerns too were about the about noise, um, the fees for um, complaints, um, the thousand foot buffer um, also was also an issue. Um, the concern of false noise complaints, if there is kind of a disagreement um, with neighbors in the area. Um, and oh, and there was also um, a suggestion about including on the application about uh, HOAs and you know whether or not uh, STRs are um, allowed within their um, association. So those were the overall concerns of my group. Thank you. Now we will hear from group six, who was led by Susie. Hi, everybody. Again, I want to apologize for my group. I cut them off 57 seconds before we were done because I hit the wrong button. But I think I got everything. Um, first, our group consisted of I, six people, seven including myself, and we were very well balanced, three neighbors and three operators. Two of the operators were non-hosted and one was uh, had a hosted unit. Um, so I'm going to start off with what is working. And I, I wasn't as, as organized as some of my coworkers. I just lumped everybody's comments into one. But I think generally that the group agreed, <laughs> excuse me, um, that what is working with the ordinance that allows the city to have a, a greater level of oversight, does a good job of defining how a good neighbor should operate and lets people know what behavior is appropriate. Um, or acceptable in a neighborhood. Um, the fact that we're limiting the number of non-hosted permits is good. Um, we did have, I did have one member that had, gave me some addresses to check into. I've asked her to follow up with me and I'm happy to get her a status on whether there's a code enforcement activated or a permit's been approved or what. Um, <clears throat> generally, I think people were happy that the regulations have been added and they were also, I think everybody was pretty um, in a, much in agreement about um, opposed to corporate ownership. So they don't like the idea of big businesses coming in, buying up a bunch of properties and operating a business out of Santa Rosa. So, um, and then a um, nice segue here. It's a really good idea, idea to regulate non-hosted units, dot, 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 but... <laughs> That leads us to what's not working and some suggestions to improve. And what I heard is what's not working is enforcement. Lou, this is not directed at you or your team. <laughs> um, they, making it fair, making, making the, um, you know, the, our, our reactions to code enforcement violations, making our rules um, fair for everybody. Um, we need more coverage on the weekend, whether it's code enforcement or police department. That's when people have parties. 
Um, and if we can't get somebody out there right then, you know, how do you see what actually happened? So um, yeah, more coverage on the weekends. And then there's the question, why does it take a year to follow up on, an, on unpermitted locations? That question stems from the address that um, was given to me in the previous section, and I will follow up. She has my phone number. She's going to follow up with me, and I'll forward her to whomever I need to forward her to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Punishment needs to fit the crime. There's apparently a $500 fee. Now, I don't know, I don't know how these, these penalties or violation fees work, but um, the, the, the feeling that I got in the meeting was that if somebody um, is throwing a party and somebody has a, you know, a sign issue, that the penalty is the same regardless and that maybe we should uh, revisit how we allocate or yeah, allocate our fines. Um, <clears throat> don't penalize good operators. Um, the, I did have uh, one gal in my, my uh, group who gave some very good suggestions. Actually, I had a couple people, two operators in the group that had some great suggestions. But um, I think I had all model operators and um, none of the, the bad players, it sounded like. And yet I had three neighbors who were located near to, near, uh, to a bad operator. So um, keep people more honest about the number of guests. Now, I don't know how we do that, but I think that that's something that perhaps we could um, require of our hosts. Is there, a, oh, and there's a question about, is there a troll? Is there somebody out there that's that's wasting a lot of staff time with bogus complaints? Um, I, I vaguely remember somebody complaining and doing a lot of research on a lot of uh, SVRs at the beginning of the um, this program at, just after the urg urgency ordinance was adopted, but I, I don't know what the status of that is. So I wasn't able to give a whole lot of information. Um, there was a request to allow a property manager to qualify as a hosted site. Um, a fee for, uh, these are some of the suggestions. Um, uh, the, the fee for non-hosted units should be based on unit size or number of bedrooms rather than having the same fee apply to people who have, you know, a studio or a one bedroom unit and somebody who, who rents out a four or five bedroom unit. Um, <clears throat> this one I thought was very interesting. Special events. Special events, I suppose, can be allowed. They can be allowed in residential neighborhoods, but we need to educate, educate business operators or, or uh, short-term rental business operators on how special events are approved and regulated. And this is something that they could probably include brochures and whatnot and let people know. It doesn't happen overnight and it does require um, approval in advance. Um, let's see, the, this was another interesting one. And I think this came up too in another group. Uh, prefer a being allowed to have more overnight guests and no extra day guests because it's a lot easier for an operator to, to control. After we we came up with some of these ideas as a group, I, my 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 good operators um, volunteered some things that have worked for them. Um, providing house rules. One of one of the gentlemen that, that was in my my group said he used to get complaints, and as soon as he put down in his house rules that your deposit will not be returned if you do this this or this, he said it stopped. <laughs> it just stopped, and I think that's a great idea. So. Um, the other suggestion is uh, another uh, um, SVR operator, STR, I keep calling them SVRs, um, require first and last names for all guests, not just the person renting the unit. I think that that makes a, a lot of sense um, on the application, so as a requirement. Um, she also had her noise sensors which uh, I think, and, and cameras for security on the exterior of her unit. But she has noise sensors and she said she's never had had anybody, she's had to you know, ask people just, well, you're getting a little bit loud after you know, whatever the hour is, the bewitching hour, but never any parties or anything like that. And so I, 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 you know, I, what I heard basically is you communicate with your guests what the house rules are. And, um, maybe that can improve. So I guess maybe let me summarize by saying, 
maybe we give some required house rules. Anyways, that concludes my download. And thank you to my group because we were very balanced, like three and three, very balanced. And um, everybody was polite and everybody participated in the discussion. Yay to you guys. Me with Kirsten. Hi, sorry about that. Now we will hear from Jessica from Group Seven. Okay, great, thanks. Um, and uh, I'm going to also try to be brief. Um, we are, I know, over time, so thank you to everybody for for sticking on here with us. Uh, so my group, um, we had six people, uh, really only four of which. Um, uh, spoke up, which was totally fine. Um, uh, wanted to make sure everybody was comfortable. Um, for those that did uh, speak up in my group, um, they were uh, um, uh, uh, short-term rental owners, um, two of which um, have not um, unfortunately had the opportunity to get permits um, yet because of the thousand foot distance. Um, and so that was a, a good topic of conversation that we had. Generally speaking, though, the, the first thing that I heard was um, uh, an appreciation for regulations so that we don't have a wild, wild west. Um, <clears throat> Um, but there were definitely some concerns about um, the regulations that we have right now. In particular, the 1,000 foot radius um, was brought up as um, something that uh, the group felt was a hardship. Um, but if we continue to have um, the 1,000 foot rule and or the cap on the number of non-hosted rentals, um, there was a feeling that the city should create some sort of a waiting list. Uh, for those who have already applied um, and been waiting um, for their permits to go through. Um, and then, you know, as far as the, the existing cap of 198 for non-hosted rentals, uh, there was a feeling that uh, if we want to keep the cap, that it should be raised, um, that a city of our size should not um, have a cap as low as 198. Um, uh, there was a statement about residents um, uh, being responsible for monitoring and calling property owner or property managers that um, that that was uh, not a fair process um, that but noting that property owners or property managers are trying, but oftentimes um, they have too many rentals to deal with and so they're not really being proactive about dealing with their situations. Um, <clears throat> we had a mix as to whether um, the uh, maximum occupancy for overnight guests should uh, be reduced to less than 10, um, or if um, it should just be uh, based on um, the total number of bedrooms. So even if a, if a property has um, more bedrooms, so if a property, for example, has six bedrooms, um, you know, sh should they be allowed to do 12? Um, uh, we had kind of a mix on, on whether that should be allowed or not. Um, there was also discussion about um, longer length of stay. Um, some folks um, thought that that would be better, um, that there would be less daily disruptions um, if, uh, if renters were required to stay for longer periods of time, so more than just you know, a single night. <clears throat> uh, but then there was um, some that thought that limiting the length of stay um, was not the right thing to do. Um, there's definitely... Um, a consensus of the group um, that uh, this should not be a business. Um, so we shouldn't have um, multiple or, or a single business entity or a single entity owning multiple short-term vacation rentals. Um, and I did hear a lot about um, these being um, shared housing. Um, I think that was a term that we was being used um, that uh, home sharing was was what it was. And so, you know, where the property owner is living in the property for, you know, a certain period of the year, but then renting out uh, as a non-hosted during other times of the year, um, that that would make perhaps a better process. Um, uh, there was also talk about with, with regard to back to the cap of 198 for non-hosted, 
Um, again, the idea of raising it for a city of our size, um, but really the market um, would naturally address the number of short-term um, non-hosted rentals um, in the city. <clears throat> and then um, we talked about events um, and whether those, uh, you know, whether there should be a definition of what an event is and, and should small gatherings be allowed. Um, and the, the thought was that, you know, family events um, are fine if rules are followed, but there shouldn't be uh, any parties at the house. Um, and that is kind of a synopsis of what we, we talked about in ours, and I will keep it to that so others can talk. Thank you. Now we will hear from Monet from group eight. Thank you, Christian. So we had five people in my group, one mysterious person who also did not speak, and we have a reporter from KRCB who's writing about short-term rental. So he was there just to listen to our comments. And we had also a balance. Two person who in general were against or opposing short-term non-hosted, and they were okay with the hosted one. And we had two other people who purchased and moved to Santa Rosa before the ordinance came into place. And now they were not able to use their homes for short-term rental. One of them has a duplex, so lives on the site and another one just purchased a large single family home. And uh, the comments were majority similar to others. The ones that who had uh, moved to Santa Rosa and are in favor of the uh, short-term rental, they said that they believe the 1,000 feet buffer is not fair and should be removed, and maybe it should be applied to owners or businesses that have multiple short-term rentals, not to the ones that they only have one short-term rental and they live in the city. And also, if you have a duplex, like two units on one property, and if you live in one of those units, it should be counted as a hosted one, because Yes, there are two separate units, but the owner lives on the site. And uh, let me see. And the ones that were opposing or not in support or favor of the non-hosted short-term rental, they believe that this brings lots of strangers to the neighborhood who are not from their neighborhood. And also there should be uh, some limit. Uh, the owner of the short-term rental should update their uh, water facilities because those people who come to the city they might not be caring about the water drought and use like a water use more than an owner should be using. So maybe the owners of the short-term rental should update to meet with the current building code to help save the water. And also short-term rentals should not allow any fireplace, fire pit or barbecue because some of these new okay, short-term who are traveling to Santa Rosa, they don't know what has happened in the past with the fire in the city. And then also one comment was like, uh, maybe we have to ask for a larger trash bin for the short-term rentals because some of them have more people and they create more trash. And some neighbors have witnessed that the short-term rentals were dumping their trash into other neighbors' trash cans. So maybe we should request for a bigger one. And then uh, again, similar comments, we should not have a cap if you only have one short-term rental, but we should not also allow an entity, a business owner, to have multiple short-term rental. That's not fair also. And let me see. Um, as one person said that they don't have anything positive to say about the ordinance. And also, as Susie mentioned, they believe that the code enforcement is not sufficient and they are not enforcing the violations. They are not good at correcting them. And also it's good to provide uh, like an education to a business owner, short-term rentals to let them know that they are not part of the neighborhood. They are just a business trying to run a business from a residential. And also uh, two people who were not in favor of the short-term rentals, they said uh, we, they should not be allowed within a residential zoning district. They should be in a commercial outside of residential. But the other comments were similar to other that talk about. So I won't go anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Now we will hear from Sheila from group nine. Great. Thanks, Kirsten. Um, am I the last person? I'm just trying to be mindful of time. No, you are not. You are group nine out of 11. Holy smokes. Okay, I'm going to jam. So a uh, fairly balanced group, two who operate hosted, one who operates a non-hosted, one who is a hopeful non-hosted person. 
And then um, for people who live next to non-hosted um, STRs. Uh, I'll just address the hosted right now. There was not much conversation about that other than um, please revise the permit fee for that. Um, make it different, make it less than. Um, conversation, very similar to the other ones that we had tonight. I don't want my group to worry. I took very meticulous notes. Those will be passed on. I'm just trying to provide information that was not brought up already. Um, how do we hold people accountable for the violations right now? <clears throat> Sherry can correct me if I'm wrong or do it later. It seems that um, complainants are supposed to call the property management company or the per person who's been assigned as the contact for that non-hosted STR. People are wanting to know how does this actually count against that non-hosted STR? How does the city get that on their radar? that a complaint has been lodged if it only goes to the manager of the, of the STR. So that was one item. Um, we did discuss sound meters, decibel meters, and the talk about that was that really, that may not be an effective thing to have, a marginally effective thing to have at your non-hosted STR. The host can have it calibrated incorrectly they can have it positioned in a way that may not um, reflect the actual acoustics on the site. So is it effective? We don't really know. Um, concern that the neighbors continue to have to be the eyes and ears for this type of use when really they just want to come home and enjoy their property. Um, let's see uh, that no non-hosted STRs in residential zoning districts, they could potentially be allowed in mixed use zoning where residents nearby might expect a commercial use. Um, particularly for larger size parcels, the 1000 feet isn't enough because with a larger parcel, it's very easy to get to 1000 feet quickly. So that could quickly change um, the fabric of the neighborhood. Um, someone else thought the uh, fee, the application fee was way too high and made it inaccessible to certain people. 198 cap right now seems arbitrary. It's leaving out a lot of people. Someone also thought that thousands of apartments are being built in Santa Rosa, that there's adequate housing uh, opposed to an overall cap and that maybe this um, decision on STR should be brought to a vote of the people. Also that maybe only local people should be owning and operating STRs, no corporate ownership. And um, this also gets to one person who lives next to a couple of these, a management company operates these. And whenever this person calls to complain, his calls tend to be transferred around. Uh, so resolution can take quite a while. Uh, that's it for me. You'll get my full notes later, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you. Now we will hear from Jandon from Group 10. Good evening, everybody. So um, like everyone else, I had, a, I had a diverse group. I had a couple of uh, operators and I had a couple of people just listening in. And I had one person um, who lived next to an STR. And um, we, like shout out to my group. We had a lot of uh, solution finders. Like one of the comments were um, that we should prioritize on the residents who need to rent their homes out. That was a um, big discussion within our group saying that STRs is um, is an economic option for some people who are living uh, who are living alone in their homes. So and that can be a livelihood for them. Um, one person brought up maybe we should limit the nights per uh, nights per year, perhaps to six months, so we don't have any of that uh, trouble. And um. Another participant said perhaps uh, money can be collected when the STR is booked as opposed to um, the operator just uh, collecting the taxes, taxes afterwards. And he's, um, he believes that they'll make it a level playing field. And um, another participant, she said the city should be more mindful of the housing site plan relative to neighboring residents. For example, um, she lived next to an uh, short-term rental, rental where the entertainment center was um, directly adjacent to the master bedroom to the, to the neighbor residents. So 
perhaps city staff can look at site plans to make sure that entertainment, the entertainment side of the house doesn't um, mess with the, the other side of the house for the neighbors. And um, yeah, another person, she just wanted to give us a shout out to the staff for being so respectful and understanding of everyone answering the short term and the emails and phone calls. And I won't take up anybody else's time. Thank you. Now our last group led by Amy will be group 11. Thanks, Kirsten. I'm going to be super fast, but as Sheila said, I also took notes and so I'll be passing these along to Sheila. Um, as far as what's working well, a, a couple of the folks on our group mentioned that um, hosted rentals are working well. They're really seen as a non-issue and that um, that's been going well. Um, most of our discussion was around what's not working well. Um, so I did have one a uh, participant who was a rental manager, and then um, the rest of those on the call were um, residents that had either neighbors or um, one that actually had a a rental, long-term rental next to him, and then um, bought that property and now runs a um, short-term rental non-hosted next door, although he is right next door, he can't be considered a hosted rental. So very interesting situations. Um, but as far as what's not working, <clears throat> um, there was a lot of comments about short-term rentals with parties and having um, really awful situations that they've had to deal with. And um, our manager, short-term rental manager person did note that um, he really feels like the best solution is education and making sure that the hosts are trained and that screening guests is a really good solution and um, doing things to preempt issues such as noise decibel sensors and outdoor cameras, um, but really making sure that you're screening those guests because there will be other guests. So making sure that the neighbors are happy is number one. Um, so I thought that was a really great perspective from um, obviously someone who's really um, operating well. And then, uh, but a lot of complaints about parties and also about how the city ignored the original survey results that community really doesn't want to allow short term rentals in residential areas. And um, one noted that they had a neighbor who the owner was in Florida and is just not present and not being responsive. And another who said they've had some re retaliation against them from the renters who are next door once they complained. So a um, lot of bad situations, but we did get some good input out of the, the meeting that we had together. Um, so with that, I'll pass it back to the full group, to Sherry. Boy, that took me forever to find that mute. Um, so I wanna say thank you, we are out of time. However, before I let everybody go, big thank you. Um, Lou Kirk is our assistant chief building official and he's also the head of code enforcement. And for anybody that wants to stay on the call, he is gonna provide a brief three to five minute overview of some changes um, to the code enforcement process on the weekend. Um, so if anybody wants to stick around for that, please don't feel obligated. Um, if you do leave, I do want to thank you so very much. I greatly appreciate this input. Staff really recognizes how hard it is to take this time, especially on a Monday evening um, during the holiday season. So thank you so much for your excellent feedback. Don't hesitate to write out, uh, reach out to shorttermrentals at srcity.org. Or if you need to speak with me directly, I'm Sherry Mead. So it's smeads at srcity.org. And thank you again. Lou, do you want to take it away? That mute button is elusive, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah, really quickly. I, and this is a common thing. And I, I thought this group might benefit. I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep this under three minutes if I can. Um, just to let you know, since September, we have revamped our code enforcement processes in a dramatic way. Uh, a lot of you are aware of it, but obviously a lot of you are not. Uh, the most important thing I wanted to say is that we have a 24 7 uh, hotline dedicated to short term rental complaints. I'm going to give that number to you right now. It's 707, of course, 543 3244. If you don't get that, you can email me later. I'm happy to hand it out for that matter. I'm happy to discuss anything related to SDR enforcement at any point in time. That's why I'm here. 
Um, but uh, to, to recap, we, we uh, have a very robust code enforcement system in place now. We have a contract officer whose sole job is short-term rental enforcement. Uh, he has been out in the community. He has been making a difference with education and enforcement. And I'll talk really briefly about the differences. I know that there were comments made about the fairness of there being a $500 fine for a huge party as opposed to a $500 fine for a sign violation. Um, and that's where officer discretion comes in. We go out and our first goal is to educate. Um, you may have received, those of you that are operators did receive uh, in September, October timeframe, we set out a success guide telling every operator exactly how to navigate the ordinance so as not to get in trouble with the city. And, um, and again, if you need a copy of that, let me know, I'll send you a copy. Um, but if, uh, say there's a, a, a portion of your advertisement that isn't being included, it's required by the ordinance, we're not gonna issue a citation for that. We're gonna let you know about it. Now, if a week goes by or two weeks goes by and it's still a problem, then a citation might be issued. But we tend to reserve those larger problems. Um, since September, we've issued 89 citations. We've uh, assessed $33,000 in fines. And again, that's not trying to be punitive, it's trying to be corrective. So for those that don't think code enforcement is out there, I wanna assure you that we are. And that again, with this hotline, we're there for you to address issues that you have. Um, we may not be able to fix them the night we respond, but the bigger problem or the bigger goal here is to get out there and document the violations so that we can engage in a dialogue with the operators, educate them, and try to make sure that that violation doesn't happen again. So um, that's it. I think I kept it to three minutes. If there's any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And again, thank you for your time tonight. Great. Again, thanks, everyone. I'm going to sign off for the evening. I think you have contact information. Reach out to us as needed. Thanks so much.